In this video, let's learn about the anastomosis that takes place around the scapula. That is the scapular anastomosis. The arterial anastomosis that is around the scapula is mainly formed between the branches of the first part of the subclavian artery, the third part of the axillary artery. The scapular anastomosis takes place at two places. One is at the body of the scapula and another one takes place over the acromion process of the scapula. To know about the anastomosis around the scapula, let's label the diagram. This is the subclavian artery, that is the first part of the subclavian artery. And this is the branch of it, that is the thyrocervical trunk. And this artery is the deep branch of the transverse cervical artery. That is a branch of the thyrocervical trunk. This artery is the suprascapular artery that means above to the scapula. And the subclavian artery continues as the axillary artery. This artery is the thoracoacromian artery. That is the branch of the axillary artery. For a video on the axillary artery, you can click on the I button. And this branch is the acromial branch of the thoracoacromial artery. This is the anterior circumflex humeral artery and the posterior circumflex humeral artery. And this is the third part of the axillary artery. This is the subscapular artery, the circumflex scapular artery. The circumflex meaning it wind rounds and these are the intercostal arteries. Now let's see the anastomosis around the body of the scapula that is here. This anastomosis around the body of the scapula occurs between the suprascapular artery that is a branch of the thyrocervical trunk that arises from the first part of the subclavian artery. So this is the suprascapular artery and the anastomosis is seen here and the anastomosis of this suprascapular artery is by the circumflex scapular artery that is a branch of the subscapular artery that is from the third part of the axillary artery and by a deep branch of the transverse cervical artery. So this is the deep branch of the transverse cervical artery that is in turn a branch of the thyrocervical trunk. And the anastomosis around the body of the scapula is seen here. That takes place between the circumflex scapular artery, a branch of the subscapular artery from the third part of the axillary artery, the suprascapular artery, that is a branch of the thyrocervical trunk from the first part of the subclavian artery, and a deep branch of the transverse cervical artery, that is also a branch from the thyrocervical trunk of the first part of the subclavian artery and the anastomosis at the acromion process of the scapula occurs between the acromial branch of the thoracoacromian artery so you can see the artery here so this is the acromion branch of the thoracoacromian artery that is a branch of the thoracoacromian artery from the axillary artery and a branch from the suprascapular artery that is from the thyrocervical trunk from the first part of the subclavian artery and by the acromial branch of the posterior circumflex humeral artery. So this branch is the acromial branch of the posterior circumflex artery. That is this one. So a revision. The anastomosis around the acromion process of the scapula is by the branch of the suprascapular artery is by the acromion branch of the suprascapular artery that is a branch of the thyrocervical trunk from the first part of the subclavian artery and an acromion branch from the thoracoacromian artery that is a branch of the thoracoacromian artery from the axillary artery and by the acromion branch of the posterior circumflex artery which is a branch from the third part of the axillary artery. So this is the anastomosis around the acromion process of the scapula. In the clinical correlation of this anastomosis, 
is the collateral circulation through the scapular anastomosis that occurs while the subclavian and the axillary arteries are blocked sometime that is between the first part of the subclavian artery and the third part of the axillary artery the scapular anastomosis serves as a potential pathway that is the collateral circulation between the first part of the subclavian artery and the third part of the axillary artery and it ensures the adequate circulation for the upper limb And the second clinical point is the axillary pulsations and compressions. The axillary arteries pulsation can be felt in the lower part of the lateral wall of the axilla. So the axilla is present here. So at the lower part of the lateral wall of the axilla, the axillary pulsations can be felt. and the axillary artery can be effectively compressed against the lower part of the lateral wall of the axilla to control the bleeding from the distal part of the upper limb so guys this is all about the anastomosis that takes place around the scapula if you like this video do subscribe to my channel and do look at some of my recent videos and playlists